Uh, my name is Lauren Horty, and I'm half of the teaching staff at the Oasis Skateboard Factory in Toronto, Ontario, uh, Toronto District School Board official taxpayer paid school. Um, and though it is a skateboard and street art themed high school, I think it's worth mentioning that I actually don't know how to ride a skateboard. Um, so today I'm going to use it for my cue card notes <laughs> instead. The students will be impressed. Right? Uh, Oasis Skateboard Factory was created four years ago, and the purpose of the school is to re-engage some of the most marginalized youth in Toronto um, through building and selling custom skateboards and running a small business. And like I said, it is a high school. Uh, most of my students have failed out of their previous schools. They're not exactly Peter Pan kids. They're maybe a little bit closer to the pirates, really. Uh, they've been expelled. They've dropped out. Um, you know, in a way, they kind of almost remind me. It's like that scene from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the island of misfit toys. That's kind of what the classroom looks like. They're a little bit like made out of spare parts and kind of looking for a new home. Uh, my students have experienced all kinds of barriers to schooling, uh, learning disabilities, poverty, homelessness, uh, drug addiction, abuse in homes, trouble with the law, you name it. And my work at Oasis is a pioneering attempt to switch the narrative on what makes good education. I guess you could say good education for bad kids and substituting in rote learning with real life opportunities and experiences. Uh, and this idea with an emphasis on authenticity. And I'm really happy to say that it's working. Uh, here we have uh, 18 students last year. 100% of them completed all of their high school credits, which is something that's completely unheard of uh, in any high school setting, not just alternative schools working with at-risk marginalized youth. But maybe we should, before I go further, we should start with the board. And this is one that one of my students made. This is our school logo, which is an evil octopus. I'm not really sure why, but it looks pretty cool. <laughs> It's funny, we didn't even discuss it. We're like, obviously it's an evil octopus. <laughs> okay. uh, so skateboard, I mean, it's an object, it's very familiar and it holds, it's really simple in a way, but it just holds an absolutely massive amount of appeal, especially for teenagers. And this really makes sense if you're familiar at all with the history of skateboarding and skateboard culture and sport. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, um, skateboarding was basically started by a, a pioneering group of teenagers, mostly in the, in the West Coast in California. And these were kids who were too poor to buy uh, surfboards, because surfboards are really expensive. And so they would buy these kind of cheap, disposable skateboards to practice their surfing moves, or when the weather was bad, they'd use their skateboards instead of surfboards. And at that time, skateboards were kind of like a novelty object, like a yo-yo or a hula hoop or something kind of cute like that. Uh, and so these kids, and when I say kids, I mean like 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds who were the founders of the subculture, uh, would say bomb around in empty swimming pools. That's where we got the start of the skate ramp that we see in like Tony Hawk video games and things like that. Uh, it was kids starting uh, to use these pools because they'd been drained by droughts in the mid 70s. So it's an example of these uh, youth looking at their physical environment and the world around them and turning it into one huge playground, which is pretty inspiring. So if you just put yourself in the place of a skateboard crazed teenager, like one of our model students here, who I don't think I can name, but we could say she's one of my favorite kids. Uh, so I was a skateboard crazed teenager. I hear about this school where for my application, instead of writing a test, I have to write a critical response to why I think skateboards should or shouldn't be allowed in schools. Uh, instead of showing a portfolio, I can bring my graffiti black book and draw a skateboard design that tells my story. So say I get one of the 18 spots in the school. Uh, when I show up, I see that my green hair and piercings are actually kind of an unofficial school uniform in a way, and all of a sudden I fit in. The skills and interests that I had, like graffiti and skateboarding, that got me into trouble, all of a sudden are getting, garnering me compliments. It's kind of like the world gets turned upside down a little bit. And one step further, I can take these interests in these kind of rebellious subcultures and get paid which is really ideal. So for instance, if I'm a student like this one in the picture, um, I get a job working for a client. So that's a custom board you can see uh, she did his portrait on. And so all of a sudden, my school project goes from being something you know, that I write and get a mark on and take home and throw in the recycling bin to something for an adult in the real world. So an adult with expectations 
and opinions and money, which is a really good motivating factor. Right. Uh, then there's the classwork. So we, there's the pressing of the board. We use these really great uh, wood, shaping board, wood shaping bags uh, by a company named Roar Rocket uh, that use vacuum pressure. So without them, our program wouldn't exist. So this is my official plug and uh, acknowledgement. And then there's, we have to think about things like board shape, uh, the camper, which is kind of like the curve of the board inside. There's wood grain, then you have to learn the woodworking and all the hands-on skills. Then we do all our graphics uh, with basically masking tape and spray paint, believe it or not. It's a lot of stencil work. So there's colors, a design, composition, symbols, icons. Uh, what else do we do? Uh, when the board is done, then you have to do a promotional write-up. How do you show all the love that you put into this object and translate that and communicate it to people in the community? Uh, and that, believe it or not, is one of the only ways I've ever got these students to write. Getting a pencil on paper is an incredible challenge. And then as a student, I'm so engrossed in creating something valuable for the real world that for money, again, I can't stress this enough, for adult approval that I don't even realize how much I've learned. Best of all, and this is the really important part of Skateboard, Oasis Skateboard Factory that I think can translate into any schooling situation. Uh, the work that I do has a real world result. Okay? It's not an essay that goes in my teacher's drawer. It's not a drawing of a bowl of fruit that goes home onto the fridge, maybe if your parents humor you. you know? uh, it's not a credit that I scratch off and then hope that maybe four years down the road I'll feel educated. It's an authentic experience. And by authentic I mean real, not practice. Something now, not something down the road. And where my time and effort is manifested you know, into an object, into an output that gains me recognition in the broader community, in a community that I really want to build, uh, that I really want to belong to. So it is just a skateboard, but it's also a vessel for critical thinking, for craftsmanship, for communication, for cooperation, analytical skills, communication, you name it. Basically, it's everything that you want in a high school education, but you can also ride it, which is way cooler than a high school diploma. <laughs> So my pioneering work as an educator, um, curriculum designer, and frontline worker with at-risk youth has been to bring these elements of different transgressive subcultures into the classroom. So say street art, graffiti, um, punk, DIY, all these other kinds of influences that we pull through. And then we do kind of flip the reverse and take the students' work and bring it back out into those communities. So we almost kind of turn the classroom inside out in a way. Um, and I really want to address the success and the importance of working with marginalized youth um, in authentic learning, so that they can feel like they have something valuable to contribute now, not four years down the road, not when they turn 18 and hatch and magically become an adult. Uh, right now, you know, in a time when common sense and back to basic learning is kind of is dominating, there needs to be a pioneering voice that speaks for these marginalized youth uh, and giving them a, a sense of accomplishment and pride. So Oasis Skateboard Factory, is about skateboards, but it's not really about skateboards. It's about authentic educational experiences. So it could be anything. It could be bicycles, it could be guitars, it could be cookies. It really doesn't matter. Skateboards are just a way of creating an entry point where, as a teacher, instead of saying, you should care about this, I can say, you do care about this. You can't help but care about this. And in that way, we're hooking in the students and showing them what an education can really be. Thanks very much.